Welcome to Talk About Topeka, I'm Chris Schultz. We begin tonight with the thrilling conclusion to last week's interview with Topeka Mayor Bill Bunton. Our apologies go out to all of you for not showing the entire conversation. We asked the network just this once for an hour long show, but they said they had to play the new Adventures of Old Christine uh, series finale rerun. Anyway, so we have the interview, the fun forecast, and then I have a bone to pick with our state election board. Stick around. Why is it important? Why is this push to, um, to maintain Kansas Avenue? Why is this an important uh, piece for our, our city to look at? Well, we ought to make it uh, mandatory viewing so that everybody understands where we're coming from on Kansas Avenue. Mm -hmm. First of all, uh, with the, the malls being developed uh, and, and, and shopping centers across the city, uh, retail businesses moved away from uh, downtown Topeka where they were when I was growing up all located. Mm -hmm. Uh, the deterioration of the downtown continued. There were some efforts made to uh, clean it up, spruce it up, but uh, without success. But in the Heartland Visioning Program, we held uh, five or six uh, public meetings which were uh, attended between, by between five and 6,000 Topekans. Mm -hmm. And their most important uh, concern was the deteriorating downtown. Mm -hmm. Uh, because of that, we gathered a group of people and talked about downtown and people came up with ideas about water features and curved sidewalks and things, quite, quite interesting, mm -hmm. but it seemed to just kind of die. Mm -hmm. And then when it came up again, why uh, we hired uh, I RGM or something like that, whatever the uh, Omaha company was that uh, dealt, with, dealt with downtown development. Mm -hmm. They developed something and again uh, we the, the city council wasn't all on board. They said they didn't have enough information. We didn't have uh, firm figures as to what it would cost to repair what's under Kansas Avenue as well as what's on Kansas Avenue. Sure. Uh, we didn't want to put, we wanted it to be a public private partnership so that a certain amount of money could be raised for the aesthetics that mm -hmm. would go along with uh, the necessities. Mm -hmm. um, the result of all that has been uh, that it slowed down again, but uh, I have appointed a committee uh, that has met twice. Uh, we now have firm figures on what it will cost to repair the street uh, the the uh, stormwater sewers and the water lines and the, the sewer sewer sewers mm -hmm. uh, underneath uh, Kansas Avenue. There are also are gas lines and electrical lines, and mm -hmm. they will be improved by the companies that uh, that own them. Mm -hmm. uh, but we we expect to have now within 30 days a plan that will show exactly what uh, the proposal would be so that people can look at it and see. And we'll also have an estimate of the uh, cost of the three phases under the avenue, on the avenue, the aesthetics. It's, it's uh, estimated that it'll cost about six million dollars to do 6th Street to 10th Street. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a lot of money until you consider that uh, Manhattan is spending $200 million on their downtown, mm -hmm. uh, issuing star bonds. We're paying cash. Uh, uh, and it was brought to my attention by the Chamber of Commerce people and go Topeka mm -hmm. that these companies that come to Topeka, like Mars and Bimbo Bakery and Home Depot and Target, and there are others that are looking at us too. Mm -hmm. They all express a concern about the downtown area. Mm -hmm. If it is a junk pile, then uh, that's a negative for us. Mm -hmm. But the, the bottom line is, is this. You have initially, on, in almost every issue, you do something or you do nothing. Yeah. 
If you do nothing, then the de deterioration continues. If you do something, it costs money. Yeah. We have a, a budget in our city of a quarter of a billion dollars a year. Uh, spend $33 million a year on police protection and another 22 or $3 million on the fire department. Mm -hmm. And uh, to spend funds that are available already. We mm -hmm. don't have to raise taxes or, uh, to, do, to direct the money to the downtown. Mm -hmm. uh, to spend $6 million of public funds seems to me to be a bargain if we can make this city something special again. And of course, we, don't, we have been traveling over the seven and a half years that I've served as mayor. We've been traveling to places like Little Rock, Arkansas, Oklahoma City, mm -hmm. uh, Omaha, There's a Des Moines, Sioux trip City, coming up here, yeah. uh, Davenport, and then we're, they're going to uh, Colorado mm -hmm. uh, next month. These are all cities that succeeded in taking their downtowns and making something about it. My father used to, to say that um, will alone is great. All things before, give way before it sooner or late. Where even death sometimes must wait for such a will. If we have the will to make this work, we can do it. Yeah. And we do have it and we will make it work. And uh, there are people that are apprehensive about it, and I understand that, but, but we're not going to do nothing. You can't, especially when things are, things are falling apart, you know, and then it's time to, to be, do the responsible thing and take care of them. Uh, you know, you see, you see a lot of things. Uh, you know, the Capitol Federal Building that's just gotten its, its rehab. I mean, it's, it's really a spectacular uh, accomplishment that they've done down there. And there's a lot of, uh, a lot of people are, are on board with this, uh, just like, uh, like Capital Federal. Um, and uh, I mean, how do, you, how do you see that? I mean, the, uh, the, the businesses, the business community, um, how excited are they about it? I've been told that uh, virtually every business that's downtown is on board. Uh, it's going to be a hardship for them because from time to time the street in front of their business is going to be under repair. I think that's, let, where, let me, that's let, one thing that's good for me. I, I care about, uh, you know, out, out in front of my store, uh, if they're going to replace the street, that's one of the things that I'm, I'm glad that they're taking a little extra time and doing it the right way, making sure the figures are done and making sure everything is, is gelling. Because the last thing I want is to close down that street in front of the store and then six months later have another water main break or you know mm -hmm. something else that does the same thing. I mean that those are the types of things that can really hurt businesses and I one of the things I got involved with a lot is to make sure that you know that the, the small businesses were looked after. You know, that was one of the original mm -hmm. things, and to make sure that that those types of things didn't happen. And I'm seeing that people are doing a good job. The city, I think, is doing uh, a better job. There's there's a a call that people don't want to get this wrong. You know, the the people at the at the city level, and from my perspective, don't want this to be wrong. They want it to be right. They want it to be a success. And it's not rather a you know, let's just write a check and throw money away, and you know, that's not the case. Uh, it really is taking the time and doing it right, and I think that's, mm -hmm. that's, what, that's what everybody wants to do. Well, um, we're going to present a program, and if it's the right program, and it will be, uh, I'm confident of a success, but I cannot imagine, if I was a, a business owner down here, and watching the deterioration as it's gone along, and seeing no one that wants to come to, the, to be of assistance, that would be a sad day. Yeah. But we're determined to make this downtown vital again, and I believe we'll be successful. Yeah. I will, uh, some people are uh, concerning the private dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been concerned, well, how are you going to raise a million dollars or two million dollars? I don't think that's a problem at all. And I'll give you, a, a, I'll tell you this quick story if I may. Sure. Uh, I was just sitting in my office one day. And this young lady came in to see me. Her name was Joanne Morell. And she sat down and said that she had uh, been to Kansas City and seen a Children's Discovery Center and thought we should have one here. Well, they talked about having one actually downtown mm -hmm. and uh, hadn't gotten off the ground and what have you. And 
uh, as she talked to her, I said to her, Joanne, how much money are you going to need to make this thing go? And she said she thought she'd had get two to two and a half million dollars. Mm -hmm. I thought to myself, oh, for heaven's sakes, I don't know how this young lady's going to be able to do that. Yeah. Uh, well, that shows you how dumb I am because she's <laughs> raised over seven and a half million dollars. It's doing it, incredible it is an work out there. absolutely remarkable place out there. And, uh, uh, visitors are coming. I was out there last summer, the 10,000th uh, visitor came. It was a little boy, was about seven years old from New York City, yeah. back here visiting uh, their parents. And just recently, every all 50 states have been there, uh, which shows mm -hmm. that, that people visit Topeka. You know, they, they do visit Topeka. The, the state uh, capitol building uh, is almost done, and that's going to be a, a draw for downtown. Plus, there's a visitor center that mm -hmm. they have appropriated the final dollars for, and we can ha well if we can do that. Well, I think that'll be a real positive uh, uh, for our downtown, mm -hmm. and uh, I hope I can live long enough to see the day when uh, it's uh, you can have Easter parade on Kansas Avenue. I think there are going to be a lot more things happening uh, with downtown. I mean, Vince Fry with DTI is doing a wonderful mm -hmm. job. I'm so glad to see him at the helm uh, down here. Uh, he, you see him walking in the store. He's on the beat and uh, making mm -hmm. things happen. So and there's, we've got a really a, a strong core of people who are really dedicated to making something great happen in Topeka. The committee that I have, which includes Vince Fry and, it, uh, and includes John Dykus and, and uh, uh, Mark Ruel, who is head of Westar and others, mm -hmm. um, have uh, uh, Jerry Farley, president of uh, Washburn University. Those people aren't used to uh, failing. You're right. Yeah. And uh, yeah. they, they will uh, give us the leadership that we need to uh, make our downtown once again vital and something special. Yeah. And if I may just close this, this subject. That sure. I've said this many times that, that Topeka is the capital of a great state. And we, we do ourselves no favor by letting our downtown deteriorate with empty buildings and deteriorating uh, infrastructure and we, we have to be you might notice I'm committed to this yes and I'm, I'm glad you're committed to it uh, you know because we really do you know I believe downtown's the heart of the city um, you know you have to follow follow the money that downtown is where the money you know a lot of businesses originate here and that's what pumps the lifeblood out to the rest of the city mm -hmm. and uh, a strong heart is going to build a strong city and that's my my thought on on downtown and why it's important Mm -hmm. um, so I, I want to ask you just a couple more questions on a, relate, on a different note um, about politics. Um, if you're in politics, you know, one of the things you don't really think about is that people don't know you, but yet half of them like you and half of them hate you. How do you kind of acclimate yourself uh, to that, knowing that uh, people who don't know you may completely despise you or people who don't know you may just think you're the greatest thing ever? Well. Uh, I, I think you're wrong, uh, Chris, in saying that half despise you and half uh, they get like to push you. a little different margin. Because yes. the truth of the matter is, for most most of us, they don't even know I'm mayor. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I'm I have uh, I'm more public than other elected officials. But how many people can tell you who their city council person is? How many people can tell you how many people are on the city council? Yeah. How, who can tell us who your county commissioner uh, representative is or your school board representative is? Yeah. And this, all these people are spending a great deal of money. Uh, we have our elections uh, for city offices, that being the, for the mayor and the uh, four or five, depending on the year, uh, council people. Uh, it's in April. Uh, the big elections are in November, and people really turn out there. Yeah. They'll turn out maybe 50, 60 percent of the eligible voters will, will vote. Yeah. Uh, in, the, in the city elections in the spring, when you elect 
uh, school board members as well as council members and the mayor and some other minor offices as well. Uh, you get about 13, maybe 15 percent of the elected voters will come out and vote. Yeah, that's. And uh, so, uh, I don't, I, I don't know that uh, hate is the right word. I think maybe there's, they hate some of the things that I say or or do. I'm about as public as I can get. I spend 45 to 50 hours a week. Uh, including weekends and early morning meetings and council meetings in the evening and what have you. Mm -hmm. I personally find them kind of boring. But <laughs> <laughs> you sit through a lot of them, that's true. <laughs> uh, so, you know, if, if, uh, if I were to ask you uh, what one of the one things, the, the, probably the single most thing that makes you proud um, to be the mayor of Topeka, uh, what is that? What, what would that be with our city? Uh, as mayor, why I'm all over the city. In fact, I spend most of the time in the center of the city and in the eastern and northeastern parts of the city, mm -hmm. and meet some absolutely remarkable people. Yeah. Joanne uh, is one of them. Yeah. And uh, Barry Feeker is another. Yeah. yeah. The rescue mission. Uh, yeah and list a whole uh, group of, name of people working in neighborhoods, uh, tr trying to make their neighborhoods a little bit better, a little safer. Mm -hmm. uh, and those people, nobody knows who they are except their neighbors. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's really uplifting. Yeah, there's a lot of people that love Topeka. And rightfully so, I'll tell you that. Um, well, we've run out of time here for our interview, and I thank you so much for coming uh, with us. But unfortunately, it's time for the lightning round here. <laughs> the notorious lightning round. That's where I put 60 seconds on the clock, and I ask you a bunch of silly questions, and uh, you throw out the answers that uh, pops your head first here. All right, you ready? And go. What's your favorite thing to do on a Friday night in Topeka? I like to go out to dinner and have a drink and uh, talk with my wife and with friends and uh, I look forward to it every Friday night. Excellent. Uh, let's see. If you were a salad, what kind of dressing would you have? Um, ranch. All right. <laughs> All-American ranch. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite hobby? I don't have a lot of hobbies. I like to play golf, but my, I can only explain my game by using the word pitiful. <laughs> But it gives you a lot of exercise. I like to work in my yard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very good, very good. And I like to spend time with uh, my grandchildren. Very good. All right, let's see. Uh, in your opinion, what was the greatest movie ever made? All Quiet on the Western Front. Oh, very good, very good. the Academy Award in 1930. And on the topics of movies, if Hollywood made a movie about your life, who would you want to play as the leading role? Oh, my. <laughs> I wouldn't want to wish that on anybody, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mayor Bunton, we are, uh, we're, our time is up for the lightning round. Our time is up for the interview. I thank you so much for coming uh, and talking to us. And uh, please come back and uh, keep us updated again and, and be on the show. If you ask me, I'll be here. Absolutely. Thank you. Chris. Thank you.
fake meteorologist Chris Schultz here with your weekend fun forecast. Our live feed from the WIBW Topeka newsletter TalkAboutTopeka.com logo cam shows a 100% chance of fun this weekend here in the capital city. It's a big weekend downtown. Cover your chin in stage blood and dress up in your best or worst pair of jeans for the annual zombie walk happening this Saturday. Registration starts at 4 p.m. so bring five dollars or five cans of food. The event kicks off or staggers actually at six. All children will receive a gift bag and there are prizes for the best zombie. And while you're downtown the Slash and Bash Film Festival will be showing at the break room Friday night. It starts with a locally produced short film contest at 7 p.m. followed by the movie's Mother's Day and Near Dark. Then on Saturday, 11 a.m. is Creature from the Black Lagoon, followed by The Fly. No, not the Jeff Goldblum one, the original. You can also see the original My Bloody Valentine, Nightmare on Elm Street, The Ward, <laughs> The Thing, and it's all happening at the break room, so there's plenty of food, drink, and drink available. Let's see, this is the final weekend for Legally Blonde the Musical at Topeka Civic Theater. Heartland Park is having their street legal drag races Friday night, pro wrestling at the Expo Center on Saturday, karaoke at every bar on Saturday. Is there anything else? Uh, probably not. I'm Chris Schultz, that's Jerry Mathers as the Beaver, and you can watch new episodes of my show, Talk About Topeka, every Tuesday night at 9.30 on me, my, but not this, TV. Welcome back. Last weekend, I took a much needed vacation to Branson, Missouri. I know what you're thinking. Chris doesn't look like he's 80. Well, I'm not. And just for your information, I didn't ride the bus either. I drove myself there. There were so many things to do. I watched shrunken heads at the Ripley's Museum, went deep inside the caverns at Silver Dollar City. I took my picture with Samuel L. Jackson, and I even replaced Kate Winslet with Leonardo DiCaprio in Titanic. It was a great trip that made me feel like the king of the world. For me, highlighting all the events in Topeka and always talking about the virtues of our great state, for months on end, I needed a little break. But I can't leave for one weekend without this happening. Officials in the state of Kansas have been looking at the process of how to take Barack Obama off the ballot there. Duty to do a good faith effort <clears throat> in every case and to hear whatever facts are relevant in every case. The debate raged on outside the Memorial Building. Are you kidding me? Look, forgiving the fact that we have Obama's short and long form birth certificates, statements from Hawaii officials, microfilm of two different Honolulu newspaper birth announcements, and refutations of conspiracy theories by factcheck.org, it's a safe bet that White House officials probably checked that kind of thing at the door. And it's 2012. At this point, it's like all the people who in 2008 said Obama would take all our guns, and now he's just claiming he's just waiting for his second term? That way he has nothing to lose? Yeah, nothing except the support of the House, Senate, billions in NRA lobbyist dollars, and uh, Moses, I guess. But that unfounded fear has been enough to really drive up gun sales this fall, just like it did four years ago. Now, here's the thing. The Midwest, and our state in particular, is most often mentioned as a punchline. Like it or not, the national discourse sees Kansas as backwards, bigoted, behind the times, or politicians, and now birther. That's a pretty big stain on our resume. It's right there below where we became the first state in U.S. history to defund our Arts Commission. Actually, most of these pages are about a church. Anyway. Now, Secretary of State Chris Kobach is nothing if not consistent, known for the writing of some of the nation's toughest anti-immigration laws. It seems only fitting that he consider checking the president's papers. But my bottom line is this. Whether or not the birther issue is dropped by our elections board, it's yet another log on a pretty big fire. One almost big enough to see from space. Can we at least stop the inflow of crazies from other areas? Like the Idaho man who tried to run for a seat in our state legislature by getting a fraudulent local address. Or the Californian who testified in our birther debacle. 
California resident Orly Tate's interrupted, demanding to speak before the objections board. And I'm here it, with evidence showing that there is forgery in the Ma'am, I'm Obama's sorry, but our, our Kansas social statutes. Security number. The our, man our, is using a stolen social security number from the state of Connecticut. He needs to be criminally prosecuted and he needs to be sent to prison just like anybody else. Wait a minute. She's been at this since 2008. I can't trust Obama. I, I have read about him, and he's not, he's not, he's a, um, he's an Arab. He is not. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma he's a, he's a, he's a decent family man, citizen that I just happen to have disagreements with. Let me tell you, it says he, uh, con converts with terriers. <laughs> with terriers? No, ma'am. No, he does not do that. The difference between this election and the last one is at least McCain had enough integrity to stand up to such bogus rhetoric about his opponent. Who's doing that today? Uh, moving on. Actually, I'd like some good news after that, and you can help me. Find something good happening in Kansas and send it to us on our website at talkabouttopeka.com, or you can even send it through Facebook, Twitter, or Gmail. Let's balance the equation. But it doesn't count if you just send us something from the Topeka newsletter, which is the index of events in our capital city. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Mayor Button's interview and the rest will be online shortly at talkabouttopeka.com. I'm Chris Schultz, and I love you. Obama supporters also pointed out that the president's own mother was born in Kansas.